Hi class, we meet again in this video. So I'm going to continue with the topic of um, ranking cycle. So in this video, I'm going to show you on how to solve for the first problem on simple ideal ranking cycle. So let us recall back um, in the previous video that I've shared in, in your um, module. So you have uh, these explanations on your schematic diagram of your of a vapor power cycle right which is your ranking cycle so you are going to have a pump a boiler a turbine and condenser and from the schematic diagram we will translate it into this ts diagram right because it is much easier to read uh, the phase the phase of your working fluid while it is in pump and then it goes into your boiler and then from the boiler into your turbine and then uh, out from your turbine is into your condenser right so in the previous video it's already explained it to you all the functions of these uh, devices okay so in in my video right now i wanted to show you on how to make use of these equations this boiler equation turbine and condenser and finally to get this thermal cycle efficiency Alright, so we have an example here to be solved. A steam power plant that operates on a simple ideal ranking cycle between the pressure limits of 3 MPa and 50 kPa, right? The temperature of the steam at the turbine inlet is 300 degrees C and the mass flow rate of steam through the cycle is 35 kg per second. So you need to show the cycle on TS diagram. Of course, with respect to saturation line, and then you need to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle and the net power output of the power plant, right? So, how much power does the power plant can produce from out of this um, um, heat from the steam? Okay. So, in order to solve this first, so let's let's um, draw the schematic diagram for you to have a clear view in here, right? So, you have a a boiler. And going up from your boiler is into your turbine, right? Where you are going to have a work produce, okay? And then going up from your turbine will be into your condenser, right? So what happened into in your condenser is that you are going to reject the heat. And what happened to your boiler is that uh, you will give in heat, right? heat to your working fluid in this case because it is a steam power plant so your working fluid is um, water so going up from your condenser it will goes into your your pump going out from your pump you will go into the boiler back again so it's going to complete one um, cycle here, right? So now this is the schematic diagram. We wanted to translate it into your TS diagram. So we plot here your TS diagram. And because we are working on your steam, which is um, water can change phase as your uh, temperature changes. So you are going to have this bell curve here. And it says that your steam power plant are working on two pressure. Okay, so you have the high pressure one which is 3 MPa and the low pressure is 50 kPa. So now you have a pump over here with respect to your schematic diagram here, right? And the function is to increase your fluid flow from low pressure to high pressure. Okay, and then this is your boiler. And then going up from your boiler is your turbine. So this is a simple idle ranking. So you just draw a straight line down here. And then you label all the cycle because this is second law, right? Where in second law states that uh, the process happened in certain direction. Okay. So let's label, let's say... Um, Inlet to your turbine is state 1, going out from it is state 2, right? So from outlet to your turbine into your condenser, right? This is, so this is your condenser line, condenser line. 
So you're going to have a state 3 in here. And finally, it is a state 4. So it makes up a one complete cycle. Right? And it says here that uh, the temperature of the steam at the turbine inlet is 300 degrees C. So 300 degrees C, if you project this line to your temperature line, so this is 300 degrees C. And recall by in the chapter of a uh, pure substance before, right? We have learned that when you have a pressure and temperature, pressure and temperature at this point, means that um, your steam right now, your water right now is in a superheated region. So this is superheated region, right? This is your mixture region. And this is the compressed liquid area. So as you can see, right? In your condenser, you are going to reject heat, right? So heat that coming up from your uh, turbine, right? So once you reject the heat, so you can see that um, from this mixture region, your working field right now will go smoothly becoming into fully liquid. This is what we call a saturated liquid, right? When you read your property table, it's going to be the value of HF, SF, uh, VF, right? So, and then what do we do at this point? Because you wanted to have a ongoing cycle because you need to produce this uh, electricity, right? So, it need, this working fluid here needs to be pumped back into the system. So, you are going to have pump here. And due to that uh, pumping, your pressure also are going to increase. And it will also increase your temperature. Okay? Okay, once you got out of the pump, it's going to go into the boiler. So what does the boiler do? It will inject the heat, right? So basically, you are going to heat up your water inside your boiler. So you are going to have a Q in here. Okay. And this process will continue until it becomes a steam, high pressure, uh, and high temperature steam. Then only, uh, once it get out from your boiler and into your turbine, so this hot steam, you can imagine that this hot steam will turn your turbine bleed, right? And goes out from your turbine and this cycle will repeat on and on and on. That's why we need to calculate for the thermal efficiency of the cycle and how much does the network produce from it. Okay. Alright, so the first question um, asks you to find the thermal cycle efficiency. So if you recall back the well, previous video, thermal cycle efficiency is actually work net divided with your Q in, which is work net is the desired output. And Q in is how much uh, input that you put into the system, right? And this work net is actually between your work of turbine minus with your work pump and divided by your Q in. It also can be equal to your Q in minus your Q out over with your Q in. Now, how does this happen? Recall back um, things that we have learned in your second law. So you have uh, high temperature reservoir towards your low temperature reservoir. And this is obey your second law, which heat will be transferred from high temperature to low temperature. And it will produce a useful work here. So that's why we are going to analyze your work net as Q in minus Q out also. Because without this heat source and heat sinks, this useful work will not going to be produced. So how are we going to find this uh, Q in, Q out, work turbine, work pump value? We are going to make use of uh, these equations and all these equations. Okay.